who can still think about things that happened to you when you were a kid. Well, if you want to be really trippy, then across multiple organisms in the entirety of human civilization, you have thoughts that span organisms, right? That, yes, taking it to that level, yes. If you're willing to see the entirety of the human species as a single organism with a collective intelligence, then that too on a spatial and temporal scale, there's thoughts occurring. And then if you look at not just the human species, but the entirety of life on earth as, as, as an organism with thoughts that are occurring, that are greater and greater sophisticated thoughts, there's a different spatial and temporal scale there. This is getting very suspicious. <laughs> well, hold on though, before we're done, I just wanna just tie sure. the bow and, yes. and say that the, the spatial and temporal aspects are intimately interrelated with each other. So activity between neurons that, that are very close to each other is more likely to happen on this, this faster time scale and information is gonna propagate and encompass more of the brain, more of your cortices, different modules in the brain are gonna be engaged in information processing on longer time scales. So there's this concept of information integration where most neurons are, Neurons are specialized. Any given neuron or any cluster of neuron has its specific purpose, but they're also um, they're also very much integrated. So you ha you have neurons that specialize but share their information, and so that happens through these fractal nested oscillations that occur across spatial and temporal scales. I think capturing those dynamics in in hardware, to me, that's the goal of of neuromorphic computing.